Gunsmoke. Brought to you by LM. The cigarette you want in the pack you want. Familiar standard pack and new crush proof box. Live modern. Smoke modern. Change to LM. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Morning, Miles. Seventeen minutes, Matthew. Seventeen minutes exactly since I sent that boy to find you. Oh, is that so? A crime has occurred, Matthew. I'm dawdling over your breakfast coffee. He's not likely to bring the culprit to justice. The boy said somebody broke into your store last night, Miles. Aye. How'd they get in? Well, by breaking the glass in the back window. Two panes at four dollars and thirty-two cents a pane. You know, Miles, I told you a year ago you ought to put gratings over those windows like the rest of the stores in town. No, eh? but gratings cost money, Matthew. Yeah, and so do burglaries. Well, what do they take? Well, I've uh, been compiling a list. Now, uh, here's exactly what's missing. One blue blanket, retail price six dollars and forty cents. One blue denim jacket, size thirty-six. Retail price two dollars. The price is not important, Miles. Oh, to me they are. I have a certain respect for money. Yeah, so I've heard. What else is missing? Well, now let me see. Uh, hmm. uh one hat, gray. Mister, hmm, of course, finest quality. Yeah, I know. I got one, Miles. Go on with the rest of your list. Yeah, uh, 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 one pair of boots, size six, untooled, inlaid with kid. Retail price twelve. Here, let me take a look at it, will you? Oh, nice. thanks. Yeah, two flannel shirts, five pounds slab of bacon, three pounds of dried beans, pounds of salt, box of matches, a skillet. Looks like you've just grub take somebody, Miles. Huh? I expect you to recover each and every one of those items. Oh, I'll you. try to. One canteen, one hand axe, two pounds of cheese, and one. One forty-four caliber Colt revolver. Model 60. Retails at fifty-six dollars and eighty cents. What about cartridges? You don't have them on the list. No, I'm out of cartridges. I'm expecting a case in today. Well, the gun won't be much use without them. Wonder if any place else was robbed last night. Great heaven! Now, what's the matter? Ah, uh, here's something else has been taken, Matthew. There were three bottles right there on that shelf, and now there's only two. Bottles of what? Yeah, perfume imported all the way from Paris, France. Now, what would a man I said grub take himself want to see a perfume for? Maybe it wasn't a man, Miles. Huh? And the size of those boots and the jacket it would take a pretty small man to wear clothes like that. Oh, you mean a girl? You know, what in the name of heaven would she be up to? I don't know. John. Yeah, what is it, sir? We'll be going Somebody come into his store, held him up a while ago. What? Did he recognize it? No, sir. He stuck a gun in his back, made him go into the store room, and locked the door on him. He said whoever it was had a real soft voice like a kid. Huh? It, Mr. Jones hadn't been to the bank yet, so at least there wasn't no cash, so... Well, what was stolen? Nothing, except a box of forty-four caliber cartridges. Thank <laughs> you. 
perfume again, will you, Matt? Yeah, sure, Kitty, sure. Uh-uh. Not any scent I know. But I sure like to. You say Miles has got two more bottles of it? Ah, uh, I got this sample from one of them. Well, there's nothing like this around Dodge. Shouldn't be too hard to track down. Yeah, provided the person who stole it opens the bottle. Well, I'll keep sniffing the breeze, Matt. Yeah. That's what we've been doing all day, Miss Kitty. Sniffing and smelling around all over town. It's like a couple of hound dogs. <laughs> but we ain't caught a whiff of this stuff. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't be likely to, Chester. Matt, maybe this girl, if it is a girl, she's already left town. Oh, in a way, I, and I hope so. She might have wanted the gun just to protect herself. She wasn't protecting herself when she shoved it in Will Jonah's back this morning, Kitty. Oh, I know, but it, it wasn't... It was me. empty then. It's not empty now. <laughs> well, by God, I was just wondering who I'd let buy me a drink this evening. Yeah? <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, Doc, you're still wondering. Yeah, <laughs> Well, good evening, Kitty. Oh, uh, hello, Doctor. Hello, Doctor. Oh, say, I understand somebody borrowed a few things off of old man McCagg last night. Yeah, they did, Doc. Oh, they did, huh? Crime rampant and the local law inhabits a saloon. Here, Doc. Uh, smell this, would you? Huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Say, what do you do, Matt? <laughs> Put it on your hair or use it when you shave. Did you ever smell that scent anywhere before, Doc? Mm-hmm. Slightly familiar. Oh? What do you mean, slightly familiar? Well, uh, I mean, I smelled the same thing earlier today somewhere. Today? Where, Doc? Where what? Where did you smell it today? Mm -hmm. I don't even remember. Say, Matt, what do you say we get up a Coke again? Doc, will you think, where did you smell this perfume today? Oh, I don't know. Let me see now. I was all over town at one time or another. It wasn't at the livery stable, naturally. (laughs) Or at the bank. (laughs) Oh, forget it, man. I, I don't have the slightest idea. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Now I remember. Yeah? I was talking to Mr. Doby in the lobby of the Dodge House, and, and this kid came in. The Dodge House, huh? That's right. He reached to the stuff. Yes, that's where it was. He rented himself a room there. <laughs> but why? I'll tell you later, Doc. Just him. Come on. Drinking water. Leave it out here in the hall. Okay, but you better get it before the ice melts. I like walk off a ways. Get your hands up. You're under arrest. What? Chester, come and take the gun. All right, get back in the room. No use getting the whole hotel stirred up. I ain't done nothing. You got no call to arrest me. Inside, I said. Uh-uh. Golly, if you wasn't right, Mr. Dillon, it is a girl. Well, you mind your own business. Who are you, anyway? What? What? He's a U.S. Marshal. That's who he is. A Marshal? Where did you get that shirt you're wearing, miss? And the boots. What about this gun? Where do you think I got it? I don't think I know now. What's your name? My name's Willie Beaver. And I'm from down around Osage Junction. Willie? What kind of a name's that for a female? Why, oh, you shut your table. Willie, now. how old are you? Sixteen. You tell me you're a business. Sixteen, huh? Why did you break into that store last night? Who says I did? The clothes you're wearing, that stepping on the bed over there, the stuff all over this room, every bit of it was stolen. How'd you figure it was me, Martha? That perfume you took. Doc Adams was down in the lobby when you rented your room here. He smelled it on you. Oh. I guess I know that person was going to bring bad luck. Them other things I needed. 
It's that kind of perfume I, I just wanted. Never had none before. Never even smelt none. Just heard about it. What are you doing running away from home? I ain't running. I already run. You was to drag me with wild horses, I wouldn't go back there. Why not? You know my step for you wouldn't ask why not. Work. Work a body to their death. That's all he knows. He's got a dry farm down here. He's never going to be worth nothing no matter what. He'll work day and night just like a man. I ain't never even owned a dress. I don't believe in going in for thrills. No, I see. He beats me, too. Last time he'd done it two days ago, I just lit out. Look, mister. You see that bruise on the side of my head? You see what? Oh, for land's sake, Nancy, that's just... All right, get your hands up, Mr. Huh? You make a move, Marshal, and I'll blow this yellow's backbone clean through his belly. I'm not moving. Just take it easy, sir. Well, All right, I, back I, up now, Mr. Away from the door. Well, I... I didn't run away from home just to end up in no jail. Where are you going to end up, Willie? Never you mind about me, Marshal. Now you two just stay put. Oh, I guess. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Young. I, I didn't have no idea what she's up to. She doesn't either, Justin. That's her trouble. <laughs> Darn fool kid. Yeah. Darn fool kid. With a loaded gun. <laughs> not being worn. Won't have to discount it, at least. Now, the same goes for this skillet, Miles. And the blanket, canteen, and that. It's one of these beans that you need, Miss McKay. Now, just hold your horses, you two. I got to weigh this cheese. Oh, no, but I'm taking a weigh this. A man can't calculate his profits without knowing his cost. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I knew some of it was gone. I hate the bite. Twenty cents was off that corner there. Twenty two cents to be exact. Well, at least you didn't have time to eat any of your bacon, Miles. Oh, there you are. Yeah, it's about the size of it. That's all we found in our room. Yeah, those are just the low price items, Matthew. You still got away with a twelve dollar and fifty cent pair of boots? He hasn't gotten away yet, Miles. We'll find it before the night's over. We know what she looks like now, at least. And we know her name. Willie Beaver. Hey, is Homesteader's child, you say? Yeah. Dry farm down toward Osage. It's a, too much work, I guess. And too little of anything else. Uh, mighty hard living, dry farming. Doesn't say much of anything to speak of. No, not much. Matthew, look, if, if you catch her and you get back those boots and that gun and the other items, well, uh, what I mean is this. She can keep that perfume if she wants it. Well, ever more. Uh, I couldn't have sell it anyway if she's used some of it. Yeah, sure, Miles. I understand. You are tired? A girl wandering around alone. Welcome, find it. Don't just stand there staring at me. I'm not staring at you, Miles. I'm just listening to you, that's all. Oh, I smirking like a cat in a birdcage. I told you that perfume isn't saleable now. You go on out and catch that young ruffian. You bring her to justice. Healing from honest, god fearing folk. Violating private... All right, Miles, all right. And, uh, if you get that gun and those boots back and, uh, get not hurt any, then the denim jacket, too. Well, I'll, uh, I'll uh, give that child a dress right out of my stock. My land of gracious. Well, it's not a matter of sentiment, no. It's just that it isn't fit for a young girl to go into court dressed like a man. 
It's no decent. Yeah, sure, sure, Miles. I know what you mean. Just a proper respect for appearances. That's all it is, isn't it? Oh, confound the both of you. <laughs> You're trying to accuse a man of charity when he hasn't an ounce of it in his entire nature. <laughs> what is that that cage office sounded like? Yeah, come on, Chester. Let's find out. I didn't know. I didn't have the least idea. Well, it wasn't your fault, Jason. Um, just did you send somebody to find Doc? Yes, we did. The Dyson boy went to fetch Mr. Dillon. That yeah. load was a girl. I'd, I'd just opened the safe and didn't let her have the money. I wouldn't have shot no girl. Not if I'd known. You couldn't have been expected to know, Jason. Oh. That bandana over her face, dressed like she was, pointing that gun just as rock. Steady as any man I ever see. Yeah. And you know, I always keep my gun stuck right between the safe and the desk, just in case of something like this. So I made like I was going to open the safe and... And... You sure, Mark? Are you sure she, she's dead? Yeah, I'm afraid she is dead. Killing a girl. I never done nothing so bad in my whole life. Who help me, Marshal? I, I didn't know. Look, anybody else would have done the same thing. Now it couldn't be helped. It's done, and blaming yourself won't undo it. Now, uh, look, why don't you go outside a while and get some fresh air? Huh? I reckon maybe I'd better. I reckon I'd just just get outside a while. Broke up pretty bad over there. Well, I guess most anybody would be. Damn poor young. Now well, she paid for it, Chester. Well, there's no point leaving her there on the dirty floor. Let's lift her up on the counter. All right. Let me get her shoulder. You know, she wasn't lying. She, she has got a bruise on her head. I guess her paw did beat her all right. Poor little thing. All right. Let's lift her. Well, what's that fell out of her jacket? Mr. Dillon, it's... Yeah, I know. It's a perfume. awful hard to tear a living out of the dry, parched earth. Yet next week, a lone ranch woman has to kill the one person who might have helped her. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Clutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright, Sammy Hill, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. We are proud to announce that Lex Corey won the annual Downbeat Magazine Award for the best original scoring of a regularly scheduled radio series as musical director of CBS Radio's Gunsmoke. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.